First question is from Mostafasen. How does body type affect your way of working out? Should a person consider a specific amount of weight or training methods if they have a mesomorph, ectomorph, or endomorph body type? I think this question is because have you guys seen a lot of? I've seen a ton of Instagram ads around this right yeah. now. Mm, like yeah, like it's it's become really a, a popular angle is to market to people by their their somatotypes, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph, and say that oh, if your body type is like this, you should be eating and training this way. Uh, and, and and not like this, and that could be the reason why you're not getting results. Yeah, it's. A, I've it's, seen the. Have you seen the one the 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 female version where they have pear? They have like, yes. There's almost like 15 different versions. They're trying to narrow it down for them. This is such a and this is marketing 101. Uh, so people oh totally get this. Like the, you're hitting a major pain point. Um, everybody, uh, in, including myself, right? Like uh, I I want to believe that even if there is some truth to it, I want to believe that it's much harder for me to build muscle than it is Justin. Mm, yeah. Ju Justin is, is at a much higher advantage than me to build muscle. He's because definitely of, thick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because his, his bone Three structure in, and, you know, so he has that advantage. And the reason why I'm not more buff is because of that, because of my body type. And maybe that's why, because I've, I've been not eating correctly for my mm. body type and my training. So that's a, that's a major pain point for a lot of people so it's a it's a great way to market but that's really all all the real weight to it it's the there's not a lot of uh truth to this yeah this reminds mm -hmm. me of uh, do you guys remember when they had the whole are you a pear are you an apple if you're this then you need yeah. to eat this way they're still whatever. marketing like that yeah so okay so those those somatotypes were created in the 1940s it was a psychologist William Herbert Sheldon, I think is his mm. name, who came up with this. And it was he was trying to be like, use like taxonomy, right? Taxonomy is classifying animals. And so he said, oh, we can classify humans into yeah. these three categories. It's been widely- Isn't it rooted in eugenics? Yeah, well, sometimes, yeah. yeah. He didn't necessarily. Not I don't know him, much about it. I know him. somebody that had, yeah, tied okay. it into that. But this is, it, it, it's been widely debunked because most people don't fit neatly into any of those categories. Most people are a combination of a lot of those things. Now, here's my opinion on training your body for for its classic, you know, how it is as a body type or whatever. At the end of the day, there's something that trumps that by far, which is your own individual self. Okay, what you don't want to do is fall into a pattern of I have I train this way because I look like this or because my body shape is this way, and then you ignore. Your own body's individual signals. When I train clients one on one, I, you know, just looking at them, I never developed a routine based off just looking at them. Mm -hmm. My routine was based off of how their Feedback. body responded, how they moved, mm -hmm. their own lifestyle. All that trumped it. Even even male and female. Here's the deal: like, uh, th there are clearly two biological categories of male and female sex. Um, and generally speaking, there are differences between men and women. Everything from hormones to fat distribution to, you know, lots of things I can generally say about men and women, but I still don't say men train this way, women train this way, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it's all individual. Yeah. It's all based on the individual. It would so, be nice if it was that simple. It would. It, it, and that's, I think that's the, you know, the key factor is that people want something that's so straightforward, so simple, and it's going to work for them right away. And so they're looking for that. And so marketers know that. And so they want, they know how to basically present that in front of you. Like, this is the answer that I was looking for. And it's speaking to me because I, I do fit within this uh, description and this type of body type mm -hmm. and all these things. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot more education that needs to happen in self yep. uh, responsibility and, and understanding of of you know like your body signals all these different factors and genetic factors that you're bringing into working out yeah I, I would say that here's the most important things if you want to you know base your workout and diet off of information um, number one your goal number two your lifestyle number three uh, you know how you feel during the workouts your behaviors what you enjoy to do those are the most important things those are the most important things and I'll give you an example of that right I could we could do some crazy analysis of an individual. I could do all kinds of biometric readings and biology, and we could test your gut flora and do all this. And I could say to you, hey, uh, Steve, we did all this complicated, took you know $50,000 worth of tests or whatever. Based off of our research, the most effective form of cardio for you is going to be to wake up at 5.15 a.m. and go swim in a cold lake. Now, if Steve 
hates that, right. never wants to do it, guess what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't right. yeah, work. Be, because we're looking at long-term success. It, right. None of that matters, right? So th- so that's why it's important to consider not, what I- Not only that, but there is there is even a massive variance day-to-day and week-to-week. True. Yeah. So you know maybe that's perfect for Steve tomorrow, mm-hmm. but then Steve uh, gets bad news at work, uh, gets terrible Steve sleep the next day. Steve goes on a drinking binge. And, that's, yeah. and here's the truth. You know, Justin said it would be nice, but it would be awful for us. We would eliminate our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be- Oh, we just pump out like like very specific, you know, PDS. Yeah. Like, here. Yeah, yeah but then, here it would be, then it would be done, right? Yeah, it would be done. done There'd be done. no reason to have conversations like this afterwards, right? Because it would be that specific. It's like, oh, here's your body type. Here's what you're supposed to be eating. Here's how you're supposed to be training. There yeah. you go. Go follow it. Just spits it out of a machine. We, yeah, we'd be done, right? And, and many people could duplicate it. But really, what that's what makes a great coach. A great coach uh, is is able to adjust on the fly like that, is to is to know to ask the right questions from the co- client to get the proper feedback to then make the best educated guess. Mm-hmm. And I say guess because we always are kind of guessing. Yeah. We don't, I don't, I don't know uh, physiologi- physiologically go, what's going on in everybody's body at every moment. And there's so many, that's what makes us so unique and beautiful is there's so many things that are happening moment to moment that it, it, you can never just categorize a, a type of person or people in a group that this is how they should eat, this is how they should train, this is how they should sleep. Nah, it just doesn't work that way. The best we can do as coaches is to help educate and inform the listener or the client as much as possible so they can learn to read some of these signals and make the best educated And this guess. is why experience is so important. After you work oh, with people yeah. years and years and years, you start to see right. patterns and your guesses get closer and better. Um, and more accurate.